Okay, so um, this is a new thing that I'm doing. I'm uh, trying to do like um, sort of a little video diary. These probably won't be much longer than like five or ten minutes a piece. But um, just saying, um, actually, this stuff I'm smoking right now is called Drain Rack. I've got a Graham Blunt Roll from Richardson Remedies. These guys are really good. They don't do deliveries on weekends anymore, but that's just because they're so fucking busy. It's really hard. This is cotton supply. But anyway, um, pass the chips. What my name is right now doesn't matter. Okay? For now, you can call me Nightmare or Ned Flanders. But you should call me Ned Flanders on the phone and call me Nightmare when I see you. Just saying, uh, there's a lot of shit that's going on right now. Can I ask you a question? Like in all honesty. Archangel Michael in the book of Revelation slayed a great red dragon and cursed him to earth and deemed him Satan, the old serpent, who chased a woman with a halo of 12 stars on her head. So this is when Satan fell to earth, right? Yeah. Then who the fuck was in the Garden of Eden? That's like a 1500 year time gap. I get changing the origin of evil from Jews believing in ascending inner evil since how they talked about their incarnation of Lilith, who varies between religions. She's actually a very empowering feminist figure now. But uh, some people do name her uh, a Lemay named Lilith, actually, which is like a Greek siren, believe it or not. Um, but here's my question. Changing that into Christianity, which is more like, you know, a neighborhood watch and an army. Jews do like the psychology. Christians do the fighting. They both bring knowledge because the military does everything with computers now. There's nothing stupid about that. What I don't get is, did Satan fall to earth before or after Jesus was born? This monarch who was supposed to rule the seven nations with an iron scepter does not sound like the Jesus that I grew up with. Because we grew up Protestant, my dad was baptized, was, I can't remember if he was baptized, but he was definitely a Catholic, for sure. A lot of my favorite comedians are Catholics, you know, like Doug Walker, Nostalgia Critic, Louis C.K., and guys like that. And we'll just tell you, Catholics basically just say, just come on in and we'll just miss the Bible for you. So I tried to appreciate that, actually. Because I do, believe it or not. Um, just saying, that's a 1,500-year time gap between the Old and the New Testament, which does not make sense to me at all. For you folks that think that the Leviathan is, is Satan, just pardon me for a second. Satan and the angels were made before the earth. Leviathan was man on earth in day five. But some people say it was. They compare it to Nidhogg from Norse, which was a glittering serpent who chased a freaking uh, eagle up a world tree, who might have been Horus, who might have been equated to the false god named Baal. You know, the golden cow that Moses told you not to, to alter, summoning a snake that came from a tree branch. Leviathan was also said to have a glittering hide, too. After God skinned and ate it and fed it to his people, the righteous deemed worthy at the end of time, they were going to basically make a tent out of it after they ate it which was also supposed to light up the whole world. Like Godzilla 1998 with Matthew Broderick and Jean Renault and Hank Azaria, Leviathan was deemed gray, actually. The red dragon is a complete stereotype. It's like God having a beard. God was not described how he looked in the Bible. He wasn't. They took a friggin' hymn, or not a hymn, I guess, a line out of a, 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 a site from the book of... one of the books. I think it was Job 4... 1-1, one one, I think, that said that it actually had many crowns, believe it or not. Let's talk straight for a sec. There are stags on the world tree that have box and pupils like a goat. Do you know what else does? A frog. You guys know who you are, if I'm talking to you. Why in Shin Godzilla do you insist that Godzilla is a frog? Sounds to me like a cockatrice or basilisk egg with a snake inside that is laid by a sex-changing frog like Jurassic Park or Godzilla 98 stereotype hatched by a fowl or a chicken, hence its camel-like legs as opposed to, you know, knee, amp, hip, ankle, like a human being. Okay? How do you explain Gojira's seven heads? Because I said Gojira on purpose. How do you explain its seven heads? There's a very famous painting online involving the Norse dragon eat hog that looks like a snake mixed with a dead deer. You know, like a Great Lakes, Michigan region, Wendigo, actually. But it also looks like the Alien Queen. Like Abaddon has lion teeth and a face like a human with a scorpion tail. The crown is supposed to come off, actually. Like Samurai Jack's Aku is the poster of Giant Godzilla 1985. With a tree. 
like Godzilla 98. Is Godzilla 1985's eye getting struck by lightning? Yes, it is, actually. So basically, my question is this. Do you know the difference between a T-Rex and an Allosaurus? That's why I used to say that Godzilla 98, to myself, was like an Allosaurus. Lots of people don't know the difference between an Allosaurus and a T-Rex. And a dinosaur is definitely not a lizard. Hence, you know, Raptor Jesus. These are all things that I'm going to go over in greater detail. I'm going to draw out like a whole syllabus, and I might put this online, I don't know. But, you know, humans are made in the image of God. To go with the eagle, I put that on another Facebook page I had like a few years ago. Jesus was a shepherd from Pakistan. Bethlehem, where he was born, is today geographically Baghdad, Iraq. They say the devil has a lab and makes things. Why do you fucking insist that Godzilla is a frog? Monitor lizards can count to six. They can. They get six nails, they move to the next stage of the maze. The smartest a dinosaur can get is probably a dog or a baboon, like a T-Rex. Or some of your upper raptors in the upper Cretaceous period, sure. Why not? You don't actually think that a thing with like three thumbs on each hand that might open a door for a mackerel, like a fish from a can of sardines, is actually going to bring a spaceship down here and, you know, lactate Sumerian humanoid reptilian breasts. No, they don't lactate. They hold their babies. They don't lactate. Of course not. There are two things, actually. There are nidhogs, which are dragons, with horns like Jormungandr's nidhogg, which is basically like the bat ears in the original black and white Godzilla. Okay, and then there's reptilian humans that they call reptoids online, which is an N-word for you guys, and I'm sorry, but you're using their Google. You have to know their terms, even if it's an Urban Dictionary punch in the dick, actually. I'm sorry about that. I don't like the word iguana all the time, because iguana means to wander off, you know, stupid. Jeremy. But anyway, just saying, it came onto land to pardon you with these diagrams, sir. Godzilla is a freaking world tree on Netflix. Look, all I'm going to I'm going to leave you on this because it's getting a little long, but I'm just saying there's a huge difference between Leviathan and a basilisk from Greece. There are six crowns on the thing's leaf-shaped head. There's a saying that they taught me in my classes when I went back to religious school online. Horns like a go, you are a flow. If it has a leaf on the back, it will attack, like red touches yellow or red touches black for a king snake versus a coral snake. No, no, scratch that. Milk snake. The milk snake is the harmless one with red next to black. The coral snake with a very venomous bite from the ocean is red and yellow. Sometimes there are moths that look like hornets, actually. A, be an, a, a hornet is actually a type of ant, believe it or not. It's called a biological mimic. It could be convergent evolution, but its specific designation is a biological mimic, actually. So, people talk to me, well, here's the thing. A frog is effectively like a fish with, with, a, with a tail like a snake. You know, it, 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 it's a fish with the ass of an eel. Okay. So, here's the thing. How does it have, like, a leaf or a head? Well, could have been made, or it could have been, like, a Dunkleosteus fish. You know, from the... Oh, jeez, that might have been before the Permian Age. The Devonian. The Devonian was the day of the fish, actually. Yes, it was. Um, just saying. These things are essentially born pregnant, like a whip-tailed lizard, actually. For some reason, this one lizard is a genuine phenomenon that all the males in the species are extinct. Komodo dragons can reproduce asexually, but it's actually extremely rare, like actual legitimate hermaphroditism in humans. We're not supposed to use that anymore, but scientifically, in the animal kingdom, they deem it a hermaphrodite, actually. In humans, they call it being a, I don't know, transsexual... Mm, I guess it'd be like a natural-born transsexual, I guess. I'm trying to be, like, politically correct. I don't want guy talk to make me sound like a complete troglodyte, actually. But, um, more to the point, um, listen... Somebody is trying to bootleg your book. That's what I use this for. I use this to scientifically explain what theta goes, like theta electricity does to make a ghost, hence the word supernatural. And if they have existential questions, I point them to your Bible, actually. Because there are monsters in some of your appendixes. There's nothing wrong in expanding a universe, because that's essentially what these clues are. You don't have to be a Christian to read the Bible. You, you don't, actually. I mean, sailors had dragons on their friggin' ships to scare away mermaids, actually. You call them lemains. In the third eye world, they're called nemains because 
you know, L is kind of a bloody word. I'm sorry to say it, but you, somebody needs to acknowledge it. Yes. So you can call it a domain if you want. Um, yes. Which is something like a serpent with a human face that also has camel legs. But there's no camels in the regions. They just compare, uh, like, compared it to like a bird or something like that. But you know the difference between a snake and a lizard, right? I mean, they are technically both squamates, but uh, lizards are smarter than that. They have thumbs. That's why I talk about Raptor Jesus a lot, because you don't actually believe that God is a dinosaur, do you? Like, the flying spaghetti monster is um, anatomically an inanimate sponge, actually. Okay. So, basically, what I'm trying to say to you is this. Natively, there are two smart things I can talk. Reptilian humans and nuthogs, actually. Which is a nod to Ralph Smart, believe it or not, who is an esoteric genius, actually. That's actually how I started a little with numerology like seven years ago in 2016. <coughs> when Shin Godzilla came out as an alien worm that metamorphosized like a frog. Okay. Woke. All right, I'll give you that. But anyway, I guess what I'm trying to say is this. Um, there's a lot of monsters in the Bible. One of them is also called a Nephilim. A Nephilim, which is a giant, like, human that basically ran out of cow's eats. So they started eating people like Japanese Attack on Titan. And your Monster vs. Godzilla movies, you know, I prefer stuff like Godzilla Minus One. But I'll throw you guys a bone. You did say that Leviathan and Godzilla were all different. Testament Solomon asks if Leviathan was Satan. You know, or a giant gator with six crowns in the back of its neck. Because they do have, like, cat-like ears, like Godzilla 2000, if it was basically, you know, a Neanderthal. You don't actually believe that God is a dinosaur, do you? The only reason I tell you that is the same reason I tell people the fifth element is lightning. Because your soul is not a flint rock for tungsten and a light bulb. There's water in the wind, too. That's how wind works to make heat. In the wind to make convection. That's how it works. Basically, more to the point, you guys do have a soul. I'm going to try to not overload you too much. Because my think tank is on and I'm kind of trying to wrap this up before I go to my day job. Because I do do this all day, but that's how I pay the rent. So, Because I, I do need to do that because I have to mind my karma. But anyway, just saying, there is shit going down. I wouldn't come out and tell you if we didn't have a plan. We didn't. Just saying, if somebody hears a nuke siren go off, even if the army's not trained to know what they're protecting, they have to do it. The 1% has a 1% too. That's why I say, you know, just... just have a little patience for your leaders, okay? Because the 1% have a 1% too. The Illuminati is not going to call themselves Illuminati because it'd be stupid. They would call themselves like Masons or something. Don't care. But anyway, shit is going on. Listen to me. Why are you still making Jurassic Park movies? Telling people that you should do that. Listen, Godzilla at least has the excuse of being another Godzilla after the first one died who was just fending creatures out of his territory and humans are just not incidentally a to him because they don't eat the same stuff. The first one, hey, my eyes are on fire from all these nukes, and every time these loud whale-looking things come around, my food goes away. But this one has spent more time around humans, like a German shepherd and a wolf. Sure, that's a frog. That's a frog, you guys. It's a fish. Like Dagon, the king of the Philistines, son of Yam, or so, is also a Sumerian fishtail god who claims to be the first Godzilla, who wanted to be an alien from outer space in Godzilla 98. Okay. Listen, that's kind of stupid, actually. I'm going to tone it down a little bit because I'm like not professional enough right now. But listen, for right now, you just call me Neidermeyer, okay? My name is Steve McKenney, actually. From Caribou Main Class 2009. I am 32 years old, but yes, my nickname around these parts is Neidermeyer. We're going to talk about Abaddon eventually. They'll point out which wiki stuff is true or not. But listen, we're after the same guy. Horus was a deviant, actually. He was. He was a legitimate deviant who would actually put ejaculate into water fountains to give his magic to people. Okay. We're going we're gonna to woke wrap this up a little bit. But uh, listen, we're all on the same side. We've all had a deviant or a bear in our neighborhood. And you know who I'm talking to. Because he was, um, like family to me. Nightmare out.